I want, would like to talk with all of you about the uh, new Vibration Shape Toolkit. And uh, uh, so this is basically an extension uh, that uh, applies to both uh, RFlex and full flex bodies. So as you can see in the outline here, we're going to review the toolkit, talk a little bit about uh, you know how things are working, what the theory is behind it, and then uh, you know how this uh, vibration shape is being calculated. Uh, then we have a, a quick example to see what the steps are to use this toolkit, and then a, a summary slide. So um, here's some examples of uh, this uh, toolkit uh, in use. Uh, so, you know, here we're looking at the uh, excavator mainframe. And so you can see, you know, this is the record ion simulation uh, in the time domain. And then this is looking at the vibrational shape. And then uh, similar thing here with this uh, component, this torsion beam um, in operation, and then uh, being able to look at vibrational shape of it. Uh, Next one here is this, uh, uh, you know, cross component here, um, and then its vibrational shape. And torsion, as we can see here. And then finally, landing gear. So we're looking at the uh, main outer strut, and then uh, its uh, vibrational mode. Okay. So that's what we want to do is to be able to look at uh, vibrational modes or shapes um, based upon you know simulation results in the time domain. So um, this can apply both to full flex and R flex bodies, um, and uh, this is in the category of the post analysis toolkits. And so this uh, toolkit is using the node information um, from the target flexible body. And uh, you know, basically we'll see here the displacements are transformed uh, using an FFT into the frequency domain. Uh, then we can uh, take that information uh, and then actually be able to uh, view it as we see on these animations on the right. And uh, Basically, with this kind of feedback, then uh, the engineer can look at these results, and it uh, helps guide decisions as far as you know how to address any kind of vibrational problems. So that's the purpose of this uh, toolkit: is to provide that guidance. So, um, you know, how do we want to, uh, or how do we use this toolkit? Um, so you want to pick a flexible body of interest and that you want to be able to understand how it vibrates um, during operation. <clears throat> and uh, in this vibration that uh, we can extract is really a function of the excitation forces. Um, and so, uh, if, you know, one can se select uh, the area of interest. And then uh, with that, within that area of interest, uh, there might be a region of maximum uh, deflection or deformation. And that tends to be you know, related to the major cause of the vibration. And then using that, uh, one can uh, establish a vibration reduction plan, uh, which could involve either you know, stiffening up the component at that location or possibly adding a, some kind of constraint and so forth, but the idea that uh, you you know what the vibration uh, you know uh, shape looks like, and therefore you can decide how to address it. So, this vibrational shape toolkit, uh, you know, what kind of vibration shape is it really calculating? Uh, so, we introduce this term called uh, operating deflection shape (ODS). And it's a way to visualize the vibration um, of a flexible structure due to excitation forces. So uh, under the loading that may occur during record ion simulation, uh, 
different components are going to experience uh, different types of vibration and noise uh, that can travel through, you know, the overall assembly. And so by taking displacement data of the flexible body, whether it's a full flex or R flex, um, then we can uh, do an FFT um, at the different nodes. And then uh, actually the relative phase difference uh, then is used to uh, generate uh, the particular vibration shape. So, um, this, uh, this ODS uh, operating deflection shape is actually calculated uh, without doing the more typical calculations of natural frequencies, mode shapes, damping ratios. It's not using that, it's using outputs from the time domain simulation. And uh, you have the flexibility of defining any kind of a patch set, you know, collection of nodes and elements that you want to have uh, for your vibrational study. So, um, you know, if uh, here on the left, we see what's happening you know, throughout a simulation in Recordine um, with this toolkit, then we can identify the different uh, vibrational shapes that are participating um, in the behavior uh, of, of the overall system in the time domain. So then, you know, how do we compare the modal analysis with the vibration shape uh, analysis? So in the case of the modal analysis, um, you know, which can be done with the RFlex Gen module, uh, basically it uh, looks at the uh, mesh of the flexible body and the various inputs, and then it uh, basically does an eigensolve to come up with the natural frequencies and the mode shapes of that component. And so this calculation is done um, without looking at the excitations. Um, the modal analysis outputs are, are basically telling us, here's what is possible. Here are possible vibrational modes. And then the actual behavior of the structure, um, you know, looking at the combination of uh, excitation of the different uh, modes and so forth you know, is going to be particular, but as far as the modal analysis, you know, that information isn't considered. It's just saying here are the possible vibrational modes. Uh, in contrast, the vibration shape um, is calculated, you know, from the work cycle of the machinery or the assembly in motion that's being studied. And so what this means is that if you have a vibrational mode and maybe there's no excitation for that mode, um, you know, in, in the time, you know, due to the time domain conditions of the simulation, you know, then that mode, you know, either may not appear or that uh, one can see, you know, from the FFT results, um, you know, what kind of magnitude it has, you know, due to the excitation in the time domain. So um, let's see. Uh, so it's the point is is that one can quickly assess you know what vibrational conditions are occurring in one's particular product uh, uh, during the work cycle that's been defined and and then if one changes loading conditions and so forth in the time domain then one will also see the response um, in, in the way that the vibration shapes are calculated which will show the effects of changing loading conditions and, and maybe different input frequencies and so forth. So in comparing the operating deflection shape uh, with the modal outputs, so this is kind of summarizing what we just talked about, but again, the ODS is looking at uh, forced response results. And whereas the mode modal analysis is looking at just you know vibrational characteristics of the structure itself um, and not looking at loading conditions, uh, the ODS can be used uh, for any structure or machine, um, you know, regardless of what kind of resonance conditions may exist. 
and the mode and that mole analysis uh, will show unique properties of that mechanical system um, itself. The vibrational shape uh, with ODS can vary according to the load conditions, whereas the modal information is changing as a function of inputs as far as mass, mass uh, values, stiffness, damping ratios, or the change in boundary conditions. Uh, the ODS uh, vibration shape can be obtained under various operating conditions that can be actually nonlinear. And uh, you can also have time varying motions and so forth. And all of those conditions can be included. And uh, the calculation on the other hand for the modal information is done, you know, really looking at linear stationary uh, uh, type of uh, motions being predicted. So let's look at the uh, process for calculating the vibration shape. So uh, we start, start out with a uh, multi-body dynamics uh, simulation with flexible bodies, which we uh, call multi-flexible body dynamics or MFBD. You know, so some kind of an assembly of components. Um, and you know, some of those components may be rigid. Uh, the uh, constraints between components may be rigid or flexible. Uh, but the uh, studies that we do are going to involve the flexible bodies, and again, whether full flex or reduced flex bodies. Um, and so then, uh, you know, we'll run the simulation, we'll have results in the time domain, as we see here, and those results uh, will be expressed at each node in the flexible body. <clears throat> we'll take that displacement information, FFT will be run on it automatically. And then we'll come up with you know frequency, magnitude, and then the phase uh, plot you know for the various uh, uh, nodes in the system and the flexible body. And then uh, that information will be averaged, and then it uh, will go through this uh, selection process, and. Um, and then will be processed, you know, uh, with uh, the sine waves. And then finally, that information uh, will become then the various vibrational modes. <clears throat> so, um, you know, as we saw before, uh, you know, for the, even a basic uh, structure like this, a flat, uh, flat plate, um, you know, depending on the excitation, there can be, uh, various uh, vibrational modes of interest um, that are related to the loading conditions. So here's an example. Um, this is using the compliant uh, clutch example. That's a tutorial, you know, that's part of your regular Recordine installation. So if you go look at the uh, tutorial section under the full flex, uh, flex tutorials, uh, this will be one of the examples that's just called compliant clutch. Uh, or flexible clutch. <clears throat> so the steps here, you know, the first step in general is to build your model. In this case, the model is available with the tutorial files. And then the next step is uh, one wants to, you know, carefully consider the simulation conditions because this is where you set up, you know, how many output uh, frames or output steps uh, with regards to the uh, uh, data at the nodes. So in this case, uh, the simulation is running uh, for uh, three tenths of a second, and then there's 1500 output steps that are requested. And so that gives us a sampling rate of uh, 5000 hertz. Um, so then you can run the simulation in Recordine, and, um, and then uh, you know the simulation results will be produced. So that's all part of the first step. And uh, we can see here the results in the time domain there in the lower right. And then uh, next step is to go to the vibrational or vibration shape uh, toolkit. So again, this is uh, you know post processing uh, menu is where it's found, and there's two icons. So uh, first you go to that group, then you click the calculation icon, and then the dialog box that's shown will appear. And then uh, you can pick the patch set uh, that you want to work with. Um, so in this model, there was just the one patch set. 
And so then that shows up. And then, uh, you know, you can, uh, you know, if you have multiple patch sets in your model, this add remove button here shown by the, uh, the label three uh, can be used, you know, to uh, remove patch sets uh, from consideration. Or if later on you want to add one back in, then you can use that button. Uh, to edit which patch sets are, patch sets are going to be considered. And then uh, you want to set the sampling frequency and the dialog box will show you what the maximum sampling frequency is, which you know for this model is the 5,000 Hertz. Um, but you can sample at a lower rate if you would like, or you can go ahead and sample at the maximum frequency, but you, you select that here in step five. And then uh, step six, you're going to show the... Uh, you know, what portion of the output time frame do you want to have considered? So if you happen to have a model that's uh, settling out uh, at the beginning of the simulation, you may want to start, uh, you know, the starting time for considering uh, the outputs for this vibrational study. You may want to have, you know, somewhat offset from the beginning of the simulation. And if you want to end it uh, more quickly, then you can control that as well in step six here. And then so step seven, you're going to define the directory file name um, that you're going to store these results in. And then once that's done, you can hit the calculation button and it will run the calculation for you. So then uh, at this point, uh, you're ready to look at some results. So the first step is um, to go to the animation uh, icon here that was next to the calculation icon. And then it will, as before, show the different patch sets so you can pick which ones you're working with uh, for the outputs. And then you can set up, uh, you know, the animation characteristics of, you know, the, uh, you know, cycles, um, you know, number of frames per cycle, basically. So in this case, 48 frames per cycle. And then the amplitude is just a scale factor. And, uh, you know, you'll want to adjust this to kind of get a uh, reasonable level of deflections. Um, in this case, if it were me, I would probably make uh, the amplitude factor a bit less because I think these uh, displacements are higher than I like to see them, but you can set that to whatever you would like to do. And then once you've done those steps, um, then uh, you're able to, um, you know, basically, um, you know, bring up these plots, um, but then also be able to animate, um, you know, show the animations um, at these different frequencies of the, uh, you know, computed vibration shape. So as before, you know, the play button will display the animation um, and then, uh, you know, you'll have feedback on the frequency of the animation and you can kind of compare that to the, uh, you know, data here on the plots. Um, so that's the steps there. And um, so you can, uh, you know, specify frequencies and then uh, display the respective uh, animations that go with that. So typically we're looking at the different peaks, you know, as far as the uh, magnitude off of the FFT uh, analysis. And um, so, you know, we're looking at the first, second and third uh, areas of peaks um, here. And so uh, as, as we look at these outputs on these shapes, you know, we can see that we're getting quite a bit of uh, movement, uh, you know, really on both sides, you know, the inner and the outer edges, but most especially on the outer edges. So then uh, we can use that information to figure out how we want to improve, you know, the vibrational behavior. So in this case, where we see all the issues um, at the outer edges, then uh, what we show here is the introduction of bushings, um, you know, at four locations on the outer edge. And actually, uh, you know, the effects of things like contact are not uh, included here. Um, 
uh, directly. Um, and in this case, you know, we're, we're kind of exciting the structure mostly in a two-dimensional sense, but we don't have a lot of constraints uh, in and out of plane um, on this flexible body. So um, anyway, with the introduction of these four bushings, we can see that we go from the plot shown on the left um, to the plot shown on the right. And uh, you can see the magnitude of the, uh, you know, displacements, uh, you know, since we're looking at displacement outputs, the magnitude of the displacements has decreased a lot. Um, and that's why we get this relatively flat uh, curve on the right-hand plot. So that's the point of this toolkit. Understand things, understand vibrations as expressed in the time domain. Um, you know, one of the things this avoids is that if you have uh, different mode shapes, um, different modal frequencies, you know, from a modal analysis, uh, you know, it, it's maybe hard to focus on which mode shapes are, you know, need to be dealt with. And with this method, you know, you can look at uh, the mode shapes that have the high magnitudes and then address those modes, um, you know, as compared to trying to address all the different vibrational modes and maybe some of them are not being excited anyway. So this helps you see um, what's, you know, that fact. So in summary, as we've seen, this toolkit is, you know, part of the post-analysis toolkits and it's really for analyzing and understanding uh, vibrations. And it's using this operating deflection shape, which is including all the, the conditions occurring uh, during the duty cycle, um, you know, in the time domain. And uh, so, uh, you know, we can visualize uh, vibrational shapes and we don't need to separately calculate natural frequencies and mode shapes. So if they're not known, that's okay. We can directly move to the vibrations due to the operating conditions. And, um, you know, with this uh, capability, we can get uh, vibrational shapes that uh, might be uh, changing a bit uh, due to loading conditions. And we'll be able to see those effects, which we can't see uh, with the modal approach. And, uh, and then looking at the results, so uh, we can then establish a vibration reduction plan, um, you know, to figure out, you know, what kind of structural changes to make or what kind of uh, constraints to add to the system. And so then, uh, you know, by doing that, we can uh, reduce vibrations in the machinery and, uh, you know, we do that by uh, looking at the locations uh, with the maximum uh, deflections. And we can do that, you know, get a feel for that visually. Uh, we can also get a feel for that by looking at the plot, you know, of the magnitude uh, coming from the FFT. And then as far as future activities, um, you know, with this release in V9R5, we can, work with a particular patch set, uh, but in the development plans are to add capabilities to actually look at the vibrational shape, you know, for the entire multi-body system. And, uh, you know, in years past, people have done this sort of thing in a linear sense, um, you know, uh, looking at uh, uh, modal uh, representations of the flex bodies, um, and then uh, trying to combine that together. So that's a linear approach, but uh, with what we're going to have with this enhanced version, it's really a way to look at vibrational shapes really for a nonlinear system, you know, that includes all the operating conditions and loads. <laughs>